Hello and welcome to this very special interview. Joining me today is India's telecom regulator, Rahul Khuller. Thank you very much, sir, for talking to us. When we last spoke, we were in the middle of the auctions, which turned out to be quite a success. Uh, and I think the roadmap ahead, or rather there seems to be a lot of anticipation around the next set of auctions, which are going to be in February. Uh, I want to understand from you what's the roadmap, if you could outline that for our viewers. Uh, well, we've been asked to set reserve prices for 900 and 1800 megahertz spectrum. That consultation process is already on, and uh, an open house discussion will be held in Delhi on 22nd. Uh, the real problem is not so much in determining reserve prices. Yes. For 900 megahertz, you have to start de novo because you've never determined those prices. Mm. But for 1800, you have a sort of benchmark in terms of what was available. As I said, reserve prices is not the big issue. The big issue here is the very availability of spectrum, both in the 900 band and the 1800 band. The first problem is that in the 1800 band, there's too little spectrum which means that if I am a 900 holder and I lose the auction, where is my fallback in terms of 1800? And second, uh, predatory pricing is going to take place, meaning it's going to be a do or die situation for operators who are in a particular LSA. For instance, supposing company X and Y are in an LSA, and company Z wants to capture spectrum, then there can be only one of two options. One is X and Y retain it because they bid through the roof, or Z also bids through the roof, and X and Z win or Y and Z win. In either event, one incumbent is out of business. So these are the real problems that um, are on the horizon in terms of this auction. Uh, I think let me take up the other question which you, the other aspect of the question which you raised, which is what should be the roadmap? Uh, ideally, I think what you should be doing is trying to release 2100 megahertz spectrum. If you release the 2100 megahertz spectrum first and do an auction on that, it will reduce the demand for 900 because essentially the race to get 900 is you can continue doing 2G and 3G on it. So if you were to give 2100 and everybody was able to get 3G going, that will reduce the madness for 900 just for pure 2G services. And since many have already got enough 1800 which they bought last time, if the 2100 were to be done with 900, 1800, then you would give more room for maneuver to the industry to be able to pick and choose. Mm. So I think that's one. But, but where are we on 2100? Uh, actually, at this point of time, nowhere. Uh, I'm told the DOT and the defense have been talking about it and talking about it and talking about it, but it's not getting done. I think at some stage, uh, this is no longer going to be a DOT officials versus Department of Defense officials issue. This has to be escalated to higher political levels because uh, defense has a lot of spectrum and we understand the need for security considerations. But that cannot be an excuse for just squatting on spectrum, which is effectively mostly idle you do need to release it for commercial use. So I think that is the big problem on 2100. Uh, can can I just go back to, sir, the point you made earlier, that if this 21 were to not happen, and we'll take this conversation further, what you're really saying is that there could be a lot of incumbents, or a few of the incumbents, who have built businesses over 20 years which could actually face a situation where they may have to shut operations. Absolutely. 
That's a scary situation. I said so in the consultation paper. I didn't mince our, my, uh, my words. We said that it is virtually a do or die situation for people in that predicament. So I'm not holding any punches, but I have not made up my mind on what we need to recommend or what action to be taken. Quite honestly, because I need to see what happens in the open house discussion. Please recall that, uh, you know, again, the industry is divided. Mm. The incumbents are screaming all sorts of uh, things about business going out of business. It is our fundamental right to have licenses extended. Uh, it are, at no, in no country does spectrum, is spectrum taken away like this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Equally, there are others who are saying, thank you very much, we want to enter, why should we be banned? So it, the, the argument cuts both ways, because if a new operator wants to enter and has got deep pockets and is willing to pay, why should the government distinguish between somebody who's willing to pay and somebody who's not willing to pay? Uh, but all said and done, it's a very, very tricky and very difficult problem. Let me just hold my guns at this point of time. Let the consultation be over. Then so so what I hear you saying, sir, is that somewhere a middle path to both these two arguments will have to be found for the telecom industry point of view. Absolutely. Some middle path has to be found. Otherwise, if you go headlong into this, like the, uh, in, the, in the way we are planning, you will have a, you have a first rate problem. And uh, let's, sir, touch on related issues. I know you don't want to uh, spell out anything more because you've not made up your mind, but are issues like, which again, you flagged off in the past, there are reports of the regulator on, say for example, spectrum sharing, spectrum trading, more efficient use of the spectrum, uh, the contiguous uh, bandwidth issue. Are those issues which could in some way, if addressed quickly, resolve some of the problems we may face in February? Um. Yes. First, I think it is my considered belief that spectrum sharing guidelines, spectrum trading guidelines, the homework has been done by us. We didn't cook it up or dream it up on our own. We consulted industry. DOT merely has to put a draft out, invite comments, sort it out, and get spectrum sharing and spectrum trading done. On MA, the guidelines that they issued have created problems and are a non-starter. Now, industry is asking for certain further concessions, both in terms of market share and in terms of the restrictions imposed on the quantum of spectrum to be held, ceiling quantums of spectrum. Uh, my own view is this, that India is desperately in need of mergers, acquisitions, and consolidation. There is no point carrying on with 10 to 12 operators, three or four who, of whom are in profit, and the rest are bleeding themselves dry. You have to create an atmosphere in which companies who wish to exit should be permitted to exit. Now, in most industries, this is commonplace. In telecom, it's complete madness because if you've got spectrum, you can only give it back to government and government will give you compensate you no, no, nothing for it. So in many cases, the most valuable asset a person owns is the spectrum. And which is why we said either a company can be bought out lock, stock, barrel, as in an m &A. But if they can't, at least spectrum trading will allow them to exit minimizing their losses, cutting their losses and running. I think these three things, if the government were to do in the next couple of months, this will clear the air for a lot of uh, companies going forward and you should start to see a beginning of a shakeout. Once you see the beginning of shakeout, then the pressure on the auction is far more reduced. Because if I can buy it, buy spectrum from you through trading, 
why do I need to go to the auction? I buy your spectrum, I work with it, and then I am no longer in the queue for the spectrum, which means there are enough takers for the spectrum in any case, whether 900 or 1800. But by reducing the pressure in this way, you need to this thing. The two other issues which you mentioned were contiguity. Um, I have often argued, and this has happened last year in 19, in September, and again in the 800 megahertz case. Uh, this madness of giving people spots of spectrum in different places is idiocy. It is sheer idiocy for two reasons. One is if you don't give contiguous blocks, you effectively limit spectral efficiency and the ability to deploy new technology. Second, the moment you have blocks of spectrum belonging to different people at different frequencies, in between you have to have guard bands. So what happens is the more disparately distributed is your spectrum, the more guard bands you're wasting in keeping them separate. Whereas if you just had f blocks of five, you will be able to release a block of an additional block of five. Now, some of these ideas have already been put in the consultation paper. And the intention is that, look, given the small quantum of 900 megahertz and 1800 megahertz spectrum available, and the fact that in the past the DOT has unilaterally reassigned frequencies so as to get contiguity. What is so difficult that between now and the auction, we similarly reassign frequencies and liberate additional spectrum so that instead of saying in some, I mean, it won't happen in all LSAs, but in many LSAs, instead of one block, you will get two to three blocks. Yeah. And the moment you increase supply, that immediately reduces the, the, the madness for the bidding and the winner's curse type of problem. On uh, 800 uh, megahertz, sir, there was a lot of uh, to and fro between the regulator and the government. Finally, you did give a set of recommendations. Uh, and now, uh, of course, source-based, no official word, but uh, again, the DOT feels that it probably should be lower. We've gone through that in the previous auctions as well, where you came out with a scientific model and eventually you stood vindicated. Uh, where are we on 800 megahertz? Do you see that happening in the near future? I, I find it somewhat perverse that <laughs> when we recommend something in September, on 900 and 1800, the government's response is, hey, you know, these are too low. And now when it comes to 1800, the, the alleged response is exactly the opposite. No, this is too high. <laughs> well, if, if, we, if, if the authority is making such a mess of it, why don't you do a better job? And the truth of the matter is, I think that the authority has done all it could. And we were candid enough to say, look, we, we may be wrong, we may be right. But we think we're approximately right. Second, nobody in the industry came up with any alternative method of valuation, which was credible. So what was I left with to do? If science is to be the basis of arriving at a conclusion, we were left with no option. On 800, no back reference has been made so far, so I don't know. But uh, I think it's not going to be easy because 800 is not a, the 800 band is being used for EVDO and data. And that's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that. But you cannot turn around and say that because the CDMA technology is dying, therefore you charge me a lower price, even though I use it to deliver high value video services. That we cannot buy. 